All right, operations with absolute values. Uh, absolute values do not always exist just by themselves. They could be part of you know a whole string of operations. So for example, what if we had the uh, absolute value of 12 minus 15, and then we subtracted from that the absolute value of 2 minus 9. All right, so I've got two absolute value symbols here. And if we think back to order of operations, which of course we had the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to remember that by, parentheses are at the top. And absolute values are kind of like parentheses in that they group things together. They of course go beyond that, but they are also grouping symbols. So these operations are being grouped together and at the top of the list here we need to take care of that first. So uh, in the first one just going left to right 12 minus 15 uh, whenever we subtract those we get negative 3 of course the absolute value symbols are still there and then for the 2 minus 9 I get negative 7 and of course that's because we subtract and keep the sign of the larger I still have these absolute values symbols here because I haven't actually taken the absolute value. All I've done is simplified what is inside the absolute value. And now when I do take the absolute value, of course, absolute values make things positive. Uh, it, in the first one, it's negative originally, the negative three, so it becomes a positive three. And in the second one, the negative seven becomes a positive seven. Now, this subtraction in between here is not associated with either one of the absolute values, so I just haven't done the subtraction yet, and addition and subtraction is pretty low down on my order of operations, but that is the last thing that I do, is the 3 minus the 7, because I've already gotten rid of the absolute values whenever I took the absolute value in this step. So now that those are gone, 3 minus 7, signs are different, subtract, keep the sign of the larger, negative 4. Uh, you might find it kind of interesting that the original question that we had had two absolute values in it, which of course make everything positive, and we end up with the negative answer, but that's just because of the subtraction that we did along the way, just so it happened that the second one was bigger than the first one so that when we subtracted them we got a negative number. So if we look at our example problem, kind of similar in that we have two absolute values and as grouping symbols that's where we want to start by actually doing what is inside the absolute value of each one first. Well the first one 11 minus 14 gives us a negative 3. So negative 3 for 11 minus 14. The other one, there's nothing I can do with the absolute value of 12. I mean, there's nothing I can do inside the parentheses. So just trying to keep it simple and only do one step in this first line, the only thing we can do is the 11 minus 14 in the first absolute value. But now that we've done that, the next step would be, of course, to drop those absolute values to figure out what the absolute value of negative 3 is. 3 to figure out what the absolute value of 12 is. 12, absolute values making whatever is inside positive. And I still have this subtraction that I'm bringing down because I want to subtract those two things. And again, since the second one's bigger, I'm going to end up with a negative in this case, but three minus 12 equals a negative nine. So our evaluation of this uh, operation that involves a couple of absolute values, again, it actually ended up being a negative number, negative 9.